Hey everyone, and welcome back to the Chill Survival Series. Today we're going to build a small library in our cottagecore town so we can get a silk touch librarian. We have lots of building and adventuring to do today, so let's get started. You know, things have been very awesome since I've gotten this super smelter and lava farm. I mean, I've got a good supply of food going. I have so much fuel at my disposal. Like seriously, I really didn't need to build this farm as big as I did. But hey, this is awesome. There is pretty much no chance of me running out. Plus, now I can smelt to my heart's content. It truly is a thing of beauty. Now, over the past while, I've been relying heavily on furnaces to smelt cobblestone back into stone. And as efficient as this new smelter is, I also rely heavily on stone brick in my builds. Gathering up a bunch of rubble to then smelt back into stone has an extra step involved in the whole process. And I don't know if you can tell, but recently I've been all about efficiency around here. Plus, collecting cobblestone isn't pleasant at all. I mean, I'm always getting pebbles in my shoes, and you know how annoying it is when you take off your boot and you're trying to find that rock that's in your shoe and it's stabbing your toe, and you think you've got it, but then you put the shoe back on again, and it's still in there. Yeah, I'm getting sick of that. So I'm thinking today's the day we get a silk touch pickaxe to solve all of those problems. Now, if we're going to do that, that means we're going to have to deal with these guys today. You all better be on your best behavior, okay? No shenanigans. That's what I thought. So if we need to get a librarian villager today, that means we need a spot for them. I'm really liking how this cottage core town is turning out, so I think I'd like to place the build somewhere around here. Now the next question is, what type of building would a silk touch librarian villager live in? I mean, we've already got ourselves a blacksmith, and these guys said they don't want any more roommates. Honestly, fair enough. And our buildings with the villagers over there are kind of getting full. The idea that I had in mind today for this guy was honestly just a small library. That way, if we end up getting a couple more villager librarians, they'll have a spot as well. Now, the age old question, where do we put this thing? I mean, the amount of space that we have here is pretty expansive. It could pretty much go anywhere. I'm kind of thinking though, this area right here feels like a natural stopping point to the village. Now, if we terraform a little bit of this space to give ourselves just a bit more room, I feel like we could probably fit something nice here. Then this section of the village will be complete and then we can just keep expanding this way. I think that's a pretty good plan. So with that spot in mind, that means our first step is terraforming. And boy, oh boy, do I have a lot of dirt that I can use. I move the dirt, I place the dirt. It's an endless cycle. All right, how's the space looking? Can we fit at least like, I don't know, seven by 11 maybe? Oh yeah, and we still have room to move it over and back if we need to. I think that should be fine. I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more room here and then we should be good to go. Yeah, I think that's perfect. I also left a really steep edge on the back here because I figured this could be a really nice retaining wall for the city when we build it out a little bit more. With this spot all sorted, I think we can just figure out how we're going to build this thing. Okay, what to build with, what to build with. Well, since we're getting that silk touch pick, you know we got to incorporate those stone bricks because that's what I was talking about today. This should tide us over too. Now we've been using tons of diorite for the builds in that area. We've got three with it so far. And as much as I love the palette, I think we should probably switch it up a bit. What about... Ooh, we could potentially use sandstone on the walls instead because then it would still be a lighter wall and that way we wouldn't be overdoing it with the diorite. So we've got the brick, the spruce and the sandstone so far which is honestly a winning combo. Now the roof is where I've really been switching things up for each build. And I kind of had an idea. We've got this roof with like blue green tones over here. What if we brought some blue tones over in this corner, which would also complement the blacksmith roof really nicely. Now, the only problem is the only other blue blocks I can think of are prismarine and warped wood. Now there's pretty much no chance that I'm going to be taking on an ocean monument today. It's a lot of work and quite frankly, I don't think we're quite prepared yet. So the other option is, I think you guessed it. We've got to go into the nether. I don't want to, but you know what? For warped wood, I will. Because it's actually a really nice block. I just don't use it much because I really hate it here. Well, thankfully I've left this trail of grass blocks so I know where I'm going, but it would have been nice if I made like a little bridge here so I can actually go over the soul sand because yeah, this is 
This is really painful. Classic drift move, honestly. Oh no, no. I'm just gonna ignore my problems. Oh my gosh, it sounds like there's like five of them. Oh, this place is the worst. Okay, just gotta take this sketchy bridge down this tunnel. And here we are. We got ourselves some warped wood. Well, now just to collect some and then get out of here. I've got just about five stacks. I think that should be good for what we need. I mean, I'm only using it for the roof, so how much could I possibly use? I think I'm gonna take my chances, because honestly, I don't want to be here anymore. Just avoiding everything, and I'm trying to leave. Ow! Okay, that actually kind of pushed me, though. That helped. Thank you. I made it. Get me out of here. Sweet, sweet, fresh air. First of all, let's get all this stuff out of here. Blech. Second of all, it's bedtime. So with a restful sleep, I say it is time to go to build town. And yeah, I do indeed still have these chests from when I was building the lava farm, but don't worry, I cleared them out. I just hid them behind leaves when I was making my thumbnail though, because I was really lazy at the time. All right, let's make sure these are out of the way though. And nope, oh, I completely forgot all of the resources that I'm gonna need to build. Let's go ahead and grab all of this stuff. A little bit of this, a little bit of that. If a chicken hatches, it can live here forever. Oh. And with all of this stuff, I can begin laying down my footprint. Honestly, I can't believe I'm making all these nice places for villagers to live in. And what do they ever do for me, huh? Nothing. Except devote their entire lives to trading sticks and books with me. So, the stone foundation is in place, and I'm gonna use some spruce logs for the bottom floor. Whee! The first floor is in place and I ended up moving it back one block just because it was a little bit too close to the other builds. Honestly, it's such a picky thing, but I actually think it made a bit of a difference. Now for the second floor, that's where we're gonna be incorporating all the sandstone. And I don't have much sand in my inventory. However, I have a massive sand pit next to me. I've never really known what to do with them. So maybe I should just kind of chip away at them and slowly over time take them down. I think that's a good solution. I actually think I managed to shave down quite a bit. Plus, I think we've got ourselves more than enough sand for this. So let's turn a bunch of this into sandstone. We'll grab some lava, drop this in the smelter, and we'll burn up some of this sandstone to make smooth sandstone. That way we have some varied textures in this build. And while that's burning up, I may as well grab a little bit more. Okay, okay, this looks like a pretty good start. I would say that's more than enough so we can at least begin building. And as always, let's start with the beams. And now we toss down the sandstone in between. Alrighty, it's not much now because of course there's no details on it, so it just kinda looks like a flat wall with just random beams everywhere, but I think you can all get the picture of where we're going with this. Now, do I have time to put the roof up before the sun sets? I think I can get some of the shape up at least. How's this thing looking with these builds? Ooh, yeah, this is coming along. So now that the frame's in place, I can finally begin filling it in with all of this warped wood. This better be worth it. I traveled all that way. I, I know it's gonna be really good. It's gonna look so cool. The villager who lives in here is gonna be like, I live in the house with the blue warped wood roof. So, and everyone's gonna be like, what? I'm so jealous. That one looks so cool. I pass by that on my way to work all the time. I can't believe you live in there. And the villager's gonna be like, I know. Isn't that wild? That's how it's gonna go down, for sure. Okay, okay, it's coming along. That's looking good. I mean, disregard the absolute hot mess of the front of the build. It happened with the last one and look how that turned out. It was all good. However, I think to bring in just a little bit more shape, we should maybe add a tower or something on top. This build's a little bit smaller than the other two, so I'll definitely give it a bit more height as well. This thing is like less of a studious mega library and more like a quaint public library, if that makes sense. It's cute, it's got lots of books, but it's just vibing. Yeah, I think that tower really helped with the shape and also the height. I'm wondering if I should bring it up by one more block though. 
The top of the tower is peeling into the roof line anyway. Plus, I don't think we could go wrong with one extra block of height. Yeah, I think that's a lot better. The gap between the two roofs makes a lot more sense. Before I do anything else, I gotta detail this thing a little bit. It is just looking so flat and so sad. We definitely need to bring some life and character into this thing. Ow. So there's only a two block gap between these two beams, which means I can do double windows, or I was kind of thinking, what if I went with asymmetrical windows? Hear me out. This just might work. More rain? Really? I checked my weather app this morning and it said it was going to be clear skies all day. Oh, wait, no. That's for tomorrow's forecast. My bad. Let's get some glass in the windows. As well as some shutters. Honestly, they're not terrible. I think we just need some campfires above the windows and then we're good to go. I'll toss these down. Extinguish them. And yeah, I think that's looking a lot better. I feel like if the shutter wasn't there, this whole thing would look a lot more awkward. It adds just a little bit of visual weight to the corner here to help kind of ground the offset window, if that makes sense. Nice. Now let's get the rest of these windows done. I've had enough of this rain. I'm gonna go read some Twilight before bed. Fresh new morning and a fresh new build. This is looking really good. So I varied all of the window styles just slightly. For the downstairs windows, I simply just did gates for the shutters. The bottom floor is such a smaller space. I kind of felt that if I had shutters like this, it would just be way too much going on underneath. So I kept it nice and simple. And then for the top floor, I did a combo of the second floor and the first floor with the gate shutters and then the campfire. And I think this is looking good. <gasps> you know what I forgot? I forgot to put a fence post at the tippy top of the tower. Can't have that. That's sandstone. That's out of place, isn't it? Maybe deep slate? Whoop! Oh no. <laughs> that was the worst landing I've ever done off scaffolding. I was trying to collect all the pieces and I didn't even get it. Anyway, yeah, I think deep slate's better. The sandstone was way too much contrast. Now let me go get those pieces that I was missing. So the exterior is all done, and I think this is looking real good. Now we gotta make this a cozy little spot so we can get some villagers in here. And yes, I said villagers, plural. I want to make sure there's enough space in case we need some more librarian villagers, because honestly, we'll probably need a couple more. We still don't have things like feather falling, protection, all of that stuff, so we need to consider that. So if we're dealing with librarians, we are gonna need a lot of leather and a lot of paper to make some bookshelves. And look at that, that's no problem whatsoever because we've got our farm set up. And next let's pay a visit to our barn because I'm pretty sure I've been stashing away a lot of leather in here. There's some, and that's it, really? I honestly would have thought that there would have been more. How did you get up there? What? Did you literally climb a ladder? That's incredible, dude. All right, I think we gotta name this fella because that was cool. And they call him Mr. Tall Guy because he's up super high. And that actually doesn't mean that he's tall at all, but that's his name. Don't forget it. Also, I need more leather, so I'm sorry. Let's get ourselves some books. Oh, wait, I also completely forgot. I've got like 51 Twilight books in here. I could also decorate with those too. Ugh. Look at that. So many surprises around every corner. You know, some type of flooring would probably be a wise idea. Just saying. Now let's go with dark oak because, I don't know, it feels kind of studious, you know? Bottom floor is um a little bit cramped. No, 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 not cramped. It's, it's cozy, okay? It's cozy. I'm just hoping this thing has the proper height clearance for the villagers' big heads. All right, let's get some little spots set up for the villagers. Well, with that all done, it looks like it's moving day for one lucky villager. Oh, well, after I lay down the rest of this track. And let's feed it directly into this one. And I think we should be good to go. Oh, villagers, it's your very best friend, Drift. I was wondering if any of you wanted to hang out, you know? Maybe go catch a bite or something. All you have to do is uh, get in that cart. Just get into the cart. That's it. It's as easy as that. There's no, absolutely no strings attached. None. Come on. Yes, I got one. Okay, bye. I'll meet you there. Don't forget to tell them it's a table of two so we can get on the waiting list. I'm sorry. 
I lied. We weren't going to a restaurant. You're gonna be the best librarian there ever was. Well, I guess with that, now we roll. Off to a bad start, but that's okay. What are you looking at? What are you pretending to look at in that corner? There's nothing there. Stop it. Am I gonna have to take you out of the cart? I don't know if you can be trusted. Please don't move. Oh, I'm so sorry. Yeah, he's not going anywhere. Perfect. I'm trying not to put too much pressure on him by hovering, but he's also not even looking at the lectern. Do you even like reading? What's your deal? So I don't know what this dude's deal is. It's been taking him forever to latch onto the lectern. Like there's a ridiculous... You've got to be kidding me. Now you're fine? Are you kidding me? Okay, well, forget what I said. <laughs> This is working perfectly now. I swear before it was taking like a minute before he would latch onto each lectern. Well, this isn't a problem now. And on the bright side, we've got another villager set up for when we need him. But for now, silk touch. <gasps> yes, okay, we got it. And it's a good thing we have tons of emeralds from trading with these guys. And he's also requesting some Twilight books. Well, it's a good thing I got plenty of those. Awesome, so we finally got Silk Touch. Now, since we're already here, I feel like I should try to get another enchantment with this dude. Some of the roles I would be happy with are efficiency. No! He escaped. Oh no, I don't want you to be a fisherman. You know what, just go, get out of here. There's no point, just go. Get out of here, man. Get out of here. Gotta respect it. He just wants to live the life of a fisherman and there's nothing I can do about it. Well, I've already got this space set out. I think I should probably try to get one more villager. It would be nice to have an extra trade set up for something we need. Who's it gonna be? Come on, get in the cart. Just get in the cart, sir. Oh, they're all going to bed. No, it's not bedtime yet. You guys go to bed so early. It's like seven o'clock. Come on. Okay, fine. I'll go to bed too. All right. The day is young and we've got to get a move on. Come on. Oh, yes. Amazing. Great work. Do you promise you're not going to leave if I break the cart? Okay. No, no. He's going for the fishing barrel. No, no, no. Stop it. Stop. Stop it. Oh, he's a fisherman. Okay. This is all on me. I don't think I'm leaving enough room for their ginormous heads. And this is what's come of it. All right. There's four of you left. Okay. I, I can afford another one. Let's go. How did you make it all the way over there, dude? Oh, he is really contemplating life over there. Please, please just stay. Please. Oh, I'm nervous. I don't know what I'm doing wrong. No! I'm just gonna block this off. And this. He has to stay here. It's fine. There we go. Got him in a cart. And you know what? Maybe, maybe you are destined to stay in the cart, my friend. Because you can't be trusted. All right, let's start rolling to see what we get. <gasps> oh! Feather falling. That's exactly what I wanted. All right. Didn't take too many rolls and I'm happy with that. We definitely need that on our boots. So I'm going to go ahead and lock that in. And thank you so much. Well, with all of these books in our hands, how about we go make that silk touch pickaxe that we so badly need? But first, I should probably make a quick stop here so I can grab a mending book. And let's grab Unbreaking from this guy. I'm starting to think that maybe I should have just rolled for efficiency from that other villager. Ah, let's just see what this table gives us first. On breaking three. I don't know what else is going to be there, so I don't think I should risk it. If we're going to make this pick, we might as well make it right. Honestly, I can afford to take one more villager. It's fine. It's fine. And off we go. Oh, sorry. Let me get the door for you. No, don't go back. Don't go back. Oh, I can't outrun it. I'm too slow. I'm too slow. And one more time. Gotta love dealing with villagers, huh? All right, my friend. Same deal as the rest. You give me efficiency five. I give you twilight books. Deal? Oh, <gasps> no way. No way. I'm locking that in. It's very expensive. Clearly, he was really interested in that deal. I didn't want to be here all day, so I'm willing to pay it. Thank you. Well, since I have all the books I need, I don't even need to bother with the enchanting table. I'm just going to go on over to this anvil, combine some books together, and finally get the books on the diamond pick. And because we had to give up so many Twilight books in order to get this pick, I'm going to name it Edward. All right, let's test this thing out. This is a thing of beauty. I can gather as much stone as I need now. So good. This is going to make building so much easier. Also, look what I can do. These are going to work so well for decorations. We can do some cool things like pop these on the floor of the blacksmith. Yeah, very cool. Oh, I almost forgot. I forgot to put feather falling on my sneakers. Except I don't have five levels. 
All right, fair enough. Um, I respect that. You know what? That's okay, though. I'm going to clean up a bunch of this stuff, and I'll run through the night, hopefully grab a couple of levels. Then once I'm done all this cleanup, we can get that on our boots. There we go, all the detailing's pretty much done. I pretty much just finished it by connecting the pathway and adding a couple leaves, flowers, and lanterns. Oh, and I also textured a little bit more of the tower because it was looking pretty flat. That's all it really needed though. And of course the inside isn't really complete yet because we're still waiting on getting some more villagers in here. So that'll be another project for another day. Oh, so you're back, huh? What you doing hanging out in here and distracting everybody? Don't you have fish to catch? Jeez. So I can easily go to my skeleton spawner to get a couple levels so I can get feather falling on my boots, or I can wait for nightfall. Well, let's just hang around and get some mobs. <gasps> my sniffers! What are you doing over there? Five levels, let's go. All right, let's finally get feather falling on my sneakers. Oh. Yes, look at me go. Should I test it out? Should I jump? from a high up place to see if it works. Should we try it? Should we try it? All right, let's go. Ah! I mean, I think that hurt less than it normally does. So that's a good thing, right? In all seriousness though, feather falling's really gonna help us out. See, I'm barely taking damage. All right, so we've got ourselves a new silk touch pickaxe and a brand new enchantment on our little boots. I would say this was a really successful adventure. Plus look at how this village is starting to take shape. It's looking really good. And the library ended up being a perfect complement to these builds. All right, everybody, with that all said and done, I think that's it for today's episode. I have a book club to attend with these villagers later this evening, so I should probably prepare for that. Bet you can't guess what we're reading. All right, everyone, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye!